الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم One of the most important endeavors that a Muslim will concern himself with is gaining knowledge knowledge that will allow a servant to reach his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala this knowledge being the, those rules that a Muslim will need to deal with his creator al-ibadat and deal with the creation al-mu'amalat <coughs> this knowledge is called the knowledge of al-fiqh one of the main ways to do this is by accessing the texts that our great scholars have authored to assist in gaining this very knowledge. Through their texts, they have laid down for us a clear path that will save us from pitfalls of ignorance. They have codified the rules taken from the Quran and the Sunnah in a way that makes it simple for anyone desiring to increase himself in knowledge to do so. And one of the most important texts of this type is <coughs> the book that I, I spoke about yesterday, the book that is before us, Muhtasar al akhwari the abridgment of Imam al ahdari as the uh, translator, one of the translators of this book to English, uh, Imam Muhammad, who himself studies in Mauritania and established a school here in America. He did a great job translating this very book into English, and it is available for anyone who, inshallah, want to have this book online. Uh, this book, Muhtasar al Akhbari, <coughs> is a beginning text of Islamic fiqh that has been benefiting the Ummah for the past several centuries. It is interesting that the author, the one who wrote this book, Al Imam al Akhbari, begins this text with a section on the purification of the heart. So before he talks about the fiqh, he begins with the fiqh of the heart, fiqh al qulub. This can be taken as a reminder that the most important endeavor we have to take on is the purification of our heart. That purification requires us to work on both the outward rules and the inward rules as well. This text has been studied by both young, young people and old, and in many locals from different parts of the Islamic world. In Al-Azhar al-Sharif, in Zaytuna, in Tunis, in Morocco, in Baghdad, and everywhere else. Even now it is being taught in different parts of America, where the author of the of one of the best translator, the translations uh, live now, lives now, Muhammad Rami al Idrisi. It is of the uh, utmost importance that all Muslims dedicate a portion of their precious lives, or let me say, all their lives, in gaining knowledge. And this text is one of the best ways to begin. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala Himself motivates us in the Quran. Are those who know equal to those who do not? Fas'alu ahl al dhikr in kuntum la ta'alamun. Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. Allah says in Surah Al Nahl, Ayah 43. إنما يحشى الله من عباده العلماء إن سورة فاطر آية 28 
only the scholars have deep fear of Allah Taala. Also, the many sayings of Rasulullah Sallallahu should be enough to motivate us to desire to seek knowledge, such as <coughs> Seeking knowledge is an obligation. It is obligatory upon every single Muslim. And when we look at the scholars of all generations, we find much press about the stations of knowledge. I mean, there is no even need for knowledge to be praised. The ignorant, if you tell them they are knowledgeable, they feel happy. Even if they do know, they're not. And when you call an ignorant, you're ignorant, he is angry. Even though you spoke the truth. <laughs> That's why Imam Mali, rahmatullahi when he was asked, when does studying become blameworthy? When does studying become <clears throat> Blameworthy, he answered, when does ignorance become praiseworthy? Ignorance is never praiseworthy. And knowledge, my brother, brother and sister, is not what you read or what you heard, it is what you memorize. Al-ilmu mahfil. And these muhtasarat, these abridgments help, these abridgments help all of us to memorize knowledge. As Imam Shafi'i Rahmatullah once said, my knowledge is with me whenever I walk in the streets and not in a trunk at my home. When you have knowledge in the book, you are asked a question, you have to go and open in your bookshelf, that's not knowledge. Knowledge is in the soul, in the chest, in the heart. And Muhtasarat, of these different signs of knowledge are used and have been used since the beginning of this day to help this ummah to be the best of all the ummah because of the knowledge of the book of Allah and that which of the book of, of the that which of the hadith of Rasulullah. The author of this book, Abdul Rahman ibn Sayyidi Muhammad al Sagir ibn Muhammad ibn Amir al Akhbari. He is a scholar of nine, the uh, 10th century of uh, Islamic calendar. He was born in 1920. He was a scholar of poet in different sciences, both fiqh and hadith, in the, science, the rhetorics and even the astronomical <coughs> sciences. He was from among the best scholars of the 10th century. His uh, books have been taught, and until now, if you go to Al-Azhar and the big universities of Islam, and even in the West, one of the best books of Mantiq that teaches logic is his book, As-Sullam, Sullam al munawraq And he even wrote a commentary on that book. And Lucien, that French uh, orientalist, when he translated this book, he said, this book is from among the best books ever written in history. He also wrote a book called Nazmul Jawahir al maknun in the science of Balaga, Bayan, and Badia. Is that this book? He wrote it in the, in the science of inheritance and calculation of inheritance. And that I just mentioned. And another book in grammar, he wrote on grammar, and Nabu Mazuri ibn Ajruma, that is Adura al Bahia, ala Nabu al Ajrumiya. And Azhar al Matari, he hated al Azaki, wal Kawaki, fi al Mistrola. He wrote also <coughs> different poetry praising the Prophet and different uh, uh, prophets, and he also wrote a beautiful 
qasida call he call it nasihatu shubah every single youth has to give this qasida the advice to the youth iyyakum an tuhmilu awqatakum wa tandamu yawman ala ma zatakum talks about how to uh, utilize our time and how to not um, lose it we see some people some of the scholars who who wrote about him they said he lived to 33 of course that's that, that's not correct he lived more than that but you can imagine someone like so when you talk about imam abdul rahman al ahdari you're talking about a person who really was young very young when he started writing when he started doing all these jobs he did and he never stopped getting, seeking knowledge from algeria to tunis to egypt to turkey everywhere he went to seek different types of knowledge. That's why one of his sheikhs used to uh, describe him as al mujtahidul mutlaq Even though he was from among the Maliki Madhab, but he called him, he said he is, he doesn't need to belong to any Madhab because he had that, that, uh, that maqam in Ijtihad. And this is not someone who just loved him, it is his teacher who described him as being al mujtahid al mutlaq one of the books he wrote is this book, Muqtasar al Akhdari. He passed in 1953 Hijriya. Uh, the scholars said when he passed, one of the things Allah wa Ta'ala blessed him with, he was one of the friends of Allah wa Ta'ala. He asked his students to take him to his native village to bury him there. When they were going there, it was very tough for the, all of them to, to go because it was far and it was difficult. Some of them said, let us just do what is best, let us bury him here. Some said, no, this is not what he said. So some of those returned. But the scholar said that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala tayya lahu muttariq. He shortened the path for those who wanted to go to do what the sheikh advised or what the sheikh has had as, a, as well. <coughs> Allah made the road short for them. They went to, to his native village and buried him there. And when they were returning, they arrived before the first group who returned. And this was a sign from the, his students that this is a great man who is accepted by Allah wa ta'ala. Because not only that, he was a scholar, but he was a very, uh, uh, I mean, a great worshiper of Allah wa ta'ala. He spent most of his time at night, at night, praying at Fajr, he went to the masjid, and then he started teaching. That's how he, and then he wrote in all these new sciences that we know today. That's Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to make it easy for all of us to follow the footsteps. And inshallah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, this was a short introduction to this great scholar, and inshallah tomorrow we will begin the, this, this beautiful uh, book that you will love, the style. He writes it and he, wrote, he used to, to, to write it and the way he touches the heart before he brings you to this great science of fiqh which will help, will help all of us inshallah wa ta'ala to deen better as we say. Deen becomes now vocabulary.